Greetings, I'm DK Ronstadt. Welcome back to the TTT News. The National AIDS Coordinating Committee is raising awareness on the re-establishment of the HIV helpline, which is 800 for hiv or 444H, and its role in the support of new initiatives in the TNT response, example HIV self-testing. We go in-depth on the effort with HIV coordinator, the Ministry of Health, Rayma Lewis, and HIV helpline coordinator, Crystal Wilson. Thank you for joining us, ladies. Ms. Lewis, I want to start with you, please. What is the HIV helpline hotline? Sure, not a problem. Um, so as you mentioned, this is an initiative through the NAC, the National AIDS Coordinating Committee through the OPM, as well as the Ministry of Health and our international partners, ITEC. So it's a revitalization of what has existed um, quite a while ago, but the helpline is an initiative that allows persons to call in that need additional support, education, or guidance as it relates to services. Um, for HIV treatment, testing and care, and of course, linking anyone to additional services beyond that. So the helpline is meant to provide as many resources as possible. And thank you so much for that. And sometimes I hear helpline, sometimes I hear hotline. Uh, how will the helpline benefit citizens, Ms. Wilson? Okay, so thank you for that. The helpline will benefit the public with information on HIV and AIDS prevention methods, HIV education, linkage to resources, psychosocial and emotional support for persons living with HIV, families, communities, and to stop the spread of HIV, stigma and discrimination of people living with HIV, as well as support the HIV self-testing. Take me through the process of the self-testing, please, ladies. And because I really uh, appreciate the fact that there's psychosocial help as well as just access to information about uh, medical uh, opportunities. And so how do we go through to access that self-testing? Sure. So self-testing is not new. Um, it's something that we know has been on the private market for some time. And so what you're seeing now is the Ministry of Health taking up the mantle to say this is a strategy for testing to ensure that we provide as many health services and opportunities for persons to know their status. So these devices will be available at some key um, health centers throughout the country. So for right now, persons can access them at the Family Planning Association, as well as the QPCCNC, which most people know as the Queens Park Counseling Clinic Center, um, which is available here in Port of Spain, as well as in San Fernando. And reach is also growing. So you will see a number of places, um, for example, the George Street Health Center, which is here in the north, um, as far as the Maruga Health Center. So there's an ongoing list and it'll be available on the Ministry of Health's website. So persons can go. They can either choose to conduct the test at the facility if they feel they need support right then and there, or persons can collect devices, take them home, and they can test themselves privately. Thank you so much for giving those two, up, those two situations, those two modalities, I guess. But when the person is carrying the test at home, is there some sort of process that you take them through because I'd want to know the proximity between okay getting a result one way or the other and then reaching out for help what is that like yes yeah, so what we've done um, we really did make a collaborative effort with the NAC to ensure that the helpline was up and running. So as Ms. Wilson mentioned, it is meant to be a form of psychosocial support. So you're not going into a health center, picking up a kit and going home, right? So we're ensuring that we give you as many resources as possible. You'll be provided with a brochure of places where you do follow-up testing if necessary. You're provided with the number for the hotline. And if the client chooses, you can share your contact information so that a healthcare worker can follow up with you via phone. So we're providing as many support systems as possible so that when you're testing at home in private, if you think you need that additional support, you have many options to reach out and be provided with assistance. 
All right, now jump in between that option and the and the helpline again. And Miss Wilson, who is responsible for the operation of the helpline? Okay, so the helpline is actually supervised by the National AIDS Coordinating Committee, right? So that's NAC, right? Um, so the helpline is supervised by NAC and also by the Ministry of Health, HACU, as well. And is it open, is it 24-7, is it open to the public, and who can avail themselves of the services? So it is open to the public. Um, it's not 24-7. Um, this is because of call volume. So as call volume increase, we would extend the time. So right now, the helpline is available from 6 a.m. to 12 midnight. All right, thank you so much for that. We're looking at WhatsApp ready yet, Ms. Lewis? Not yet. Um, but we are, again, as Ms. Wilson mentioned, if we see the need and we're seeing that persons are requesting that, it's something we can definitely look into. But for now, it's, it's not there. All right. And who are some of the stakeholders? Because you said it's he heavily engaged. There's a lot of conversation crossing, perhaps even breaking silos. But who are some of those people in really involved? So as Ms. Wilson, Ms. Wilson mentioned, um, the Ministry of Health, the NAC through OPM, and ITEC, which is an international partner through PEPFA, which is um, providing services and support and resources through the AIDS response, HIV response here in Trinidad and Tobago. All right, and remind us of that number, please. So is, and this is a number that is toll free. I know sometimes yeah, there's, a, there's an issue when people talk about 800. So take us through that, thank you. Yeah, so it is a toll free number and that number is 800 for HIV or 800 4448. All right, so we take a short break. We return to the conversation with Arima Lewis, HIV coordinator at the Ministry of Health, as well as Crystal Wilson, HIV helpline coordinator. Stay with us, we return with more. Welcome back. We are speaking about the self-testing campaign as well as the HIV helpline system. We're doing so with uh, Rima Lewis as well as Crystal Wilson. And uh, Ms. Lewis, you spoke about, you gave us a little idea of some timelines. So you said after a while. So what was the call? What was the reason to say, okay, well, this is something that we need to have again. This is something that we need online. We need functional. Sure. Um, I think we've recognized that there's been a lack of conversation or less conversation around HIV and AIDS. Um, I know many persons would say, you know, growing up, there was so much more information online. Well, not online, but um, in the media. And what we've recognized is that the need is still there. However, we need to implement different strategies. So persons may not necessarily want to seek this information or this support directly at a health center or places where they have to physically engage. So we recognize that a helpline is an opportunity for persons to make that first step, um, break that initial barrier. So we think it's, it's so far it's been going very well. We've had persons engaging and we hope that conversations like this increases engagement. Thank you so much. And Ms. Wilson, I want to follow up on that question with you. Thank you. In terms of the services that are being offered and some of the feedback, naturally, we're not asking for specifics, but in terms of the kind of feedback that you're getting in, for using the persons using the helpline. Okay. Well, the helpline was relaunched in December last year, right? December 1st. And since then, we've had almost 125 calls, which is really good for the helpline reestablishing itself. Um, on the helpline, we have peer navigators and psychosocial, um, what we call companion active listeners, who are there to guide a newly diagnosed person towards all the different aspects in terms of linkage to care, retention and care, and psychosocial support, right? And, Carrie, and from that active listening to basically being a human portal for the information, uh, was there a period of time that you said, okay, well, we need to take the people, the individuals who are those active listeners through their paces so that any situation that is foreseeable, they're able to deal with that? What was that training process like? Yes. So last year, the active listeners would have went through a 10-module 
training um, training session, and this was facilitated by ITAC. And the active listeners are continuously going through um, training sessions. So this is capacity building sessions. So we have bi-monthly meetings, and these bi-monthly meetings, the active listeners are able to do case debriefing where we can share information, share resources, as well as build capacity. All right, and Ms. Ms. Lewis, what's one of the main things in terms of coordinating this, this campaign that you'd want individuals to be aware of? And this is either, either side of someone who wants to get tested or someone who wants to use the helpline. What are some of those things that you really want people to know about? I think the main thing goes back to getting tested knowing your status, which is one of the reasons we chose to implement the self-testing strategy. Um, the sooner that you know your status, the sooner you can be on ARVs, which is antiretroviral medication and therapy, and the longer you can live um, and live a healthy and holistic life. And for us, if we know that support is needed, we ask you to contact the helpline. We think they go hand in hand. Knowing your status is paramount to your entire physical and mental well-being. And we want to ensure that we're supporting all of that through the helpline. So Does the data tested, that you are recording send you to target a certain individual, demographic, range? Who are you looking at specifically, even though you're saying, okay, well, we want individuals to get tested. Is there a grouping that you're really looking out for to be tested, Ms. Lewis? Well, I, I don't want to be vague. We want everyone to know their status. However, we recognize that there are some populations that may avoid traditional means of interacting, meaning um, they may not want to go into a health center to get tested. So we know men um, are persons who view their health a little differently. We know that men don't engage in health seeking behaviors the same way that women do. Um, so we're definitely asking and I'm putting a call out to all men in our society to ensure that they are looking into all areas, all aspects of their health, including their sexual health health. So not only men, we know our young people, um, you know, HIV is something that we have made huge advances in. However, sometimes that means that persons may still continue to take um, risk and engage in riskier behaviors. And we know that tends to happen sometimes with our younger persons in society. So we know that men, again, they, they struggle with coming in to take care of themselves. So we're asking them to get tested. And of course, our younger persons in society as well, we're asking that we make um, an intentional effort to engage with them. And of course, we have different um, subsects that we call our key populations that we recognize may um, be more vulnerable or um, have less access or perceived less access to care. So we know that from within the Ministry of Health, those are the persons that we're engaging. And I, we actually see that playing out in other ways in terms of individuals thinking, okay, well, and this is even during the pandemic, I'm thinking that I may have COVID, but I don't want to get tested because I don't want to yeah. know for sure. So we see we see some parallels. We, it's, it's possible to be drawn. But Ms. Wilson, what are some of those things that you, you're looking for in terms of these are the indicators that will say, okay, well, it's time to scale up a little bit. It's time to get towards having, to being WhatsApp ready. It is, uh, it's time to have more active listeners. What are some of those things that you want to say, okay, well, these boxes are checked so we can scale up a little more in our operations? Okay, so for that, I would say looking at whole volume, listening to our callers and what their needs are, right? And responding to those needs accordingly. So if we have a percentage of persons calling within after midnight, that sort of thing, those things are monitored right now. So we are monitoring those things. We are seeking to start social media, right? To get the message out, have conversations going. And then from there, we will decide which is the best way, which is the best route to go. So basically listening to what the population is asking for and meeting them there. Okay, but call, the, the number of calls is one thing. 
but is are you also looking at the duration? Is that is that one of the things that you take into consideration as well? It is one of the things that we are taking into consideration. Um, a self test call would be approximately twenty minutes. Um, so far, we've had self test calls. However, they weren't self test calls in terms of they needed someone to be on the line. They just wanted more information on where to collect the HIV self-testing. So, yes. All right. Thank you so much for that. And Ms. Lewis, do you find more people saying, okay, well, I'm going to administer the self-test at the point that I've gotten that, that, that test? Or is it a matter of saying, yeah, what a, let me get my little briefing, my brochure, and go home or a place that I find is a little safer for me to take this, to administer this test. What, what, what is the research and data showing? So for now, um, what we're seeing locally, um, because we really just um, rolled out the strategy less than a month ago, most of the self-testing occurs at site. So we hope to see some changes um, and persons actually taking it home within the next month or so. We believe there'll be more engagement in that way. But for now, persons are testing at the facilities. And I think it's because it's new, right? So the more we talk about it, we think the more persons are going to want to go home to do that. All right, and we see the number for the helpline up as in 800-4HIV. We have about a minute, so let me share closing arguments now. 30 minutes, Ms. Wilson. I oh, was sorry, 30 seconds, Ms. Wilson, and 30 minutes. 30 seconds, Ms. Lewis. Ms. Wil Ms. Chris, Ms. Wilson, you're on tap. Okay, so what I would like to say is the helpline is confidential. We are guided by confidential um, ethical principles. So persons can feel free to call the helpline. Even if it is a non-HIV related matter, you can call the helpline and we would guide you accordingly. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Lewis. Um, at the Ministry of Health, we encourage all persons to engage in their personal health, and that includes knowing their HIV status. So please get tested, go into your local health center. You may have a finger stick test done there, or you can request an HIV self-test. So we want to thank you so much, ladies. Rima Lewis, HIV coordinator of the Ministry of Health, as well as Crystal Wilson, HIV helpline coordinator. And remember the NAC helpline, the helpline hotline, 800-4-HIV, and that is a 4448. And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, I'm DK Ronster. This has been In-Depth. Thank you for joining us.